Hello, hello, hello. I am upstairs looking at the ocean. Looks amazing. And I'm trying out different angles with different light angles. So matching colors. <laughs> I'll put this in here as a buffer for my oh, I can you see the one here. This is one here. That's my elbow buffer. That's, that works good. Yeah, this is better. It's a little bit better. I like this. The, the light's coming from the front. Looks a lot better. So it doesn't cause like shadows and stuff like this, like in the other one. It's also unflattering and like when the light comes from the side. So whatever anyway i finished my artwork it looks amazing so i don't know if you can see it it's in the corner it's in the corner over there i put i just set it up because set it up on top of the the sewing materials so and that way it is that I didn't want to drill holes. So I don't know. We might be moving. So I don't want to drill any more holes into the walls. So, but maybe I will. I don't, I just don't know where to hang them, which location. So I want to talk a little, little bit about psychology, different things I observe in people and in myself, of course. You know, I'm not standing above anyone with anything. Yeah. So I'm going through life. I'm trying things out. I I test myself with different things. I do meditation. And I catch myself when I'm in a struggle with someone then I immediately remind myself, okay, this is a struggle. This is not good for the person or for myself or for the world. So I let go of that other person and I go into meditation within myself. And that's the only path that we have. There is no other way to do it. So that is the only way to do it. Yes, Papa Doc. Yes, my everything are you. Yes, Papa Doc is sleeping there by the balcony door. Yes, yes, my everything are you. And he's dreaming and he's wagging his tail in his dream. And I highly recommend to people to sometimes when when they feel bored or something or when they when they feel empty or when they feel like there's nothing to do or think think about that that happens sometimes too because the brain goes into some sort of a break then don't panic and don't force yourself to fill out this gap of time don't go into any kind of activity you know just sit down and just let your brain take its course go go through whatever it wants to go through maybe a total break of things and maybe it needs to process something so sometimes the brain needs to process things and it needs time for that and it needs space for that and it can't be 
burdened with another activity or thought process or movie or horror movie, you know, people watch horror films to escape from their pain. I have done it many times. I always like those horror films that have a deeper meaning, that have something to say to the world, like the Hannibal Lecter films, particularly the one, The Silence of the Lambs, and the one with Edward Norton as the detective. So that's a good one too. That's a, that's, that goes deep into psychology. That goes very deep into psychology. And obviously the, that Joker film goes into psychology as well. I don't want to watch it because I just read about the theme, you know, the, the story, the, the rough story of it. And that is something people can identify themselves with. You know, that's, that is a, a personality, that is a character that people can identify, almost everyone can identify with that, you know. Women and men can identify with that. You know, having been bullied. You know, um, Alessandro Michele, the, the creative director and, and designer of Gucci. He has been bullied as a child. You know. Just as every, I would say every single sensitive child has been bullied or is being bullied right now you know creative people creative thinkers sometimes they commit suicide another amazing mind lost to the world so some of them are lucky they they make make it through it and they and they heal their wounds and they become designers and they, they make something amazing happening for the world, you know. So some are not so lucky, they suffer terribly psychologically. Some suffer so much they can't even be creative. That happened to me many times for long stretches, for many years in between. But there's a solution to every problem in the world. Every single problem has a solution. We don't see it. We just don't see it momentarily, but the solution is there. All we need to do is we need to read a lot. We need to go on the internet and read a lot. Read everything and, and critically. Read it critically, particularly stuff that comes from religious backgrounds. That has to be inspected minutely. You really have to crit critically inspect that. You have to look over their shoulders. You really have to. You have to look over every guru's shoulders. Okay. And you have to look backstage what's going on there. You, know? you have to inspect that guru or whatever someone is putting himself in the forefront and pronouncing things and saying things to the world. You know, could be important things, but still look over that person's shoulder question it what what he says is that true what he said or Eckhart Tolle for example you know when he says things like he said some things that I don't agree with you know he, he said things 
that suffering may be bad on an individual level or on a, I don't know what he exactly, but then he said something, it may be, it, it, he said that it is beneficial on a wider perspective or something like that. I totally disagree with him. So I look over his shoulder. I like this man, you know, I like him very much. He has a lot of good things to say, but I'm not going to take the bad with the good, you know, so, and don't, don't look at these people as a guru. Don't worship anyone. Look at them as, oh, this is just another human being who has something to say. Let me hear what she or he says. And then question it. Is it true what they said? You know, Let me find out. Let me inspect it. Let me test it for myself. Or if you don't like someone, you know, sometimes, you know, I see that a lot with people. They start to dislike someone, but they're not even consciously aware of it. So they become mean to that person. My mother has been doing this my whole life with me because she doesn't want to admit that she doesn't like me. I'm her daughter. So she would never want to admit that to herself even. But then she shows it, you know, by throwing little meannesses at me. And it, I don't know whether that is what caused me to go against the grain of society, but the way I look and the way I dress and talk and everything about me is definitely a form of opposition. But not only because now I have to go into an opposition, but also because I question society. I question what people do. I question fads. I dislike fads very, very deeply particularly those that make people sick, those that make people die. I've seen a woman die from starving herself. Well, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. It's a horror. I've known several anorexic women one of them was our realtor. She wanted a child, could not conceive. Her body was too thin, didn't have enough fat. I recommend not to have children. I'm just using this as one of the, one real hefty example of what anorexia does to people. Cause all kinds of health problems. It's a mental illness. That's what it is. And it's not mysterious. It's not some kind of mysterious chemical imbalance, you know, and I'm not making fun of it at all. I feel deeply for these people, deeply. Just the other day I saw a physician you know, making YouTube videos, giving health advice. A skeleton giving health advice. That's, a, that's as bad as someone who weighs 500 pounds <laughs> giving health ad advice. So then there's a lot of people that will laugh about me giving health advice because I'm overweight, but I'm not 500 pounds. I'm two, about 220, 200, 230, something like that. 
I find that within the range of normal, well, most people will disagree with that, but it's still within this, the range of normal. I upped the the upper end a little bit with that. But someone who's 5'9", who weighs 100 pounds, that's not enough. So it should be somewhere, probably somewhere in between to be the ideal weight, you know, for someone who's 5'9", like myself, to be weighing about, I don't know, 160 or 170, you know, something like that. Also depends, of course, depends on the bone structure. But yeah, somewhere in that range, it's probably ideal weight. So, but you know, I extend this to 250. That's probably the maximum. I don't know, I'm probably at the maximum. 230 is probably the maximum within this range of normal you know that's not the ideal weight it's definitely not the the healthiest weight because back pain sometimes it's important to go hiking breathe a lot of fresh air it's very important it's important not to eat meat or not to eat dairy products very important one can still be fat eating or chubby eating vegan food, definitely. If you, ha if you have good appetite and you eat like two large bowls of soup with rice in it, that's what I do at night. That fills me up and holds me over the night. And it's healthy. And it's, yeah, it's still very nourishing and gives, still gives some natural fats. So I eat a lot of apples also. I drink vegan milkshakes with apples, oatmeal, filtered water. What else? I make strawberry shakes with strawberries and soy milk or use oats and water and blend that and it tastes really great and it's really good for you. It's really nourishing. So, and you know, you can be chubby on whole food vegan, you know, mainly raw. That's the best. That's the best food by far. And the most nutritious and the best, the healthiest and the most ethical. And you can also be having a normal weight on that as well. I mean, it really depends on how much you eat of it, you know, and how much you move your body. Of course, if you sit a lot like I do on the computer or doing artwork, you know, then you gain weight, of course. So, but this fad of being thin, the whole, the whole problem behind that is the need to look elegant. And then it, it becomes distorted. When they look in the mirror, they're, they're, what they see becomes distorted in their minds. It really becomes distorted, like those distortion mirrors. They see themselves too fat, even if they're already skin and bones. And then it just takes on a life on its own. And it, it's, it's all motivated by this, I want to be elegant. I want to be regarded as high class. That's what it is. I want to be regarded as high class. I want to be, and then what is behind that? Let's dig into it. Dig into it. Don't be afraid to dig into it. I dug into something real deep yesterday. Ooh, that was... I cried a lot 
I dug into some, so I'll get into this in a, in a moment. Thank goodness I don't have this anorexia problem. My gosh, my gosh. Boy, that's awful. Whew, man, I had some bulimia at age 15, but only for like for a couple of months. Then I, uh, I quit because I realized, consciously realized, this is not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. I was losing weight for a pony that my parents bought me. And that was just at that time when I was growing and, and they weren't thinking that, you know, I will out, I'm just right now about to outgrow this, the, the capacity for that pony. So I felt bad about this. So then I ended up not riding the, the pony anymore. And we gave the pony to a little girl. I, they should have never bought me a pony. They should have known, you know, that I'm becoming big and 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 fat and tall. So and way too heavy for a pony. They should have bought me a Belgian draft horse, but my mother didn't want a, a draft horse because and again for this is the same motivation as the anorexia. My mother didn't want which. Uh, also as part of her life you know she also wants to be thin not she's not anorexic but she wants to be thin and she wants to be respected and i think that's really the thing behind it and also to have only iceland horses it's like i want to be respected by society i can't have a draft horse you know this is all this is all mental what's wrong with having a draft horse among Iceland horses, so it doesn't make any sense. So there's nothing wrong with it. I think that's cute. So, but anyway, whatever, you know, it's always this, it has to be just right, or it has to be, some people, they have to be like, just like everyone else, exactly. It has to be exactly calibrated. I better get 10 Vogue magazines every day. And I know a woman like that. I used to live with her. Oh, my gosh. You always this. Uh, also want to add, she she's from Sweden. And I noticed, I'm not saying that everyone from Sweden is a Stockholmer. But I think that runs in the genes. The people that are the native Swedish people that 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 are very it somehow runs in the genes they have to get along you know because they evolve that way you know they have to get along and that's the only way they make it through these really cold siberian winters but that was in the past now we have a global society now they're inviting people in that are not like them and they, but they think everyone is like them, and they project every, that on everyone, and then they wonder why they don't behave like them, and why they take over their country, and so on, and and they still hold the other cheek and go because it's in their genes, you know. We we need to get along, but the other folks, they they don't see it that way. They don't want to get along. So total chaos. That's the end of Sweden, you know. So, and these people also, I noticed like with that friend that I lived with, she got magazines looking, how is everyone dressed right now <laughs> during these times? So I better dress exactly like them so that they will like me. And that's, that's in the DNA, you know, it's like, I want to be liked, I want to, no confrontation. Yeah, my mother has that in her really, really big. I have some of this in, in definitely, I have some of this in my DNA as well, but it's more rather recessive. So, <laughs> Flatty me, the impaler took over in my genes, so, which is good. Uh, so survivor mentality. Yeah. 
So you got to have a Medusa in you. You can't be, oh, we need to get along through the cold winter or something. No, you got to stand up for your rights, man. Woman, whoever you are, you got to stand up for your rights. You got to stand up for your family, for the safety of your animals and children and, and your own existence. So don't don't accept what that person with the other mindset says to you, you know, just because you want to get through the cold winter. He doesn't want to get through, through the cold winter. He wants to enslave you during the cold winter. So you got to rethink all of this. Rethink your genes. Rethink. Go. You have to manually go against your your evolutionary predispositions so and my mother has that in her and you know this we need to be fitting in just well like a cookie cutter puzzle piece you know that's very annoying for me <laughs> To say the least. That's also one reason why I live here and they live halfway around the globe. That's one of the reasons, one of the hefty reasons. But the main reason is that she was mean to me. And she was mean to me because she wasn't aware that I was going on her nerves, you know, I, particularly on her ego's nerves. Ego is mental, mental illness. You know. Ego is not rationality or truth or or balance. You know? So I was going on her ego's nerves. I was constantly stepping on her ego's shoes. And just by existing, by being me, and not by being cookie cutter adapted, which she wanted me to be. You know? There's no chance in the world for me to be adapted to anything. If there's a trend that goes this way, I go the other way, you know, just by default already. I'm making a video right now, making a video. And this time it is shining at the door, by the way. So just letting you know, I'm making a video. <laughs> it's going back down the stairs. <laughs> it's like, uh, I lost my nerve, I'm going back down the stairs. Even though the exercise, the upside down table is blocking the view <laughs> for the door. So I recommend to people, you know, we need to become, become very consciously aware. For some people, it's a little bit more difficult to go against that natural predisposition that they have of, you know, we need to all get along. We need to get the, get through the cold winter. We need to get, get along in our cabin fever house, you know. So the people at the equator didn't have that problem. So they evolved very differently. Okay, Or the, the people in the desert, like in Afghanistan and, and out there, they yet evolved differently. They evolved. The, the the real assholes, psychopaths, they survived out there. It didn't it didn't have to be that way, but it evolved that way because they were the ones that killed off the other ones ruthlessly. And then they passed on their genes and the offspring was uh, in like a hundred thousand people, there may be one person who's kind. So something like that in that order. It's not a it's not some kind of I'm not judging it from a wider perspective. I'm judging it because we I have to judge the world as in I have to look at the world for what it is, yeah, and I have to see how this came about, and then I ha I I need to know. I'm collecting data, right? 
not in terms of uh, now I want to become prejudiced or I want to judge or I want to whatever, categorize people in, in, in some mean ways or something. No, no, there are good people everywhere. There are bad people everywhere. But there are certain statistical facts, okay? And there's evolutionary facts. There's genetic facts, okay? And we need to look at it. We need to acknowledge it. And it's not about evaluation. It's not about good or bad. It's about, okay, they evolved like this. So for them, it's a little bit more difficult to adjust to a balanced state of mind. So it's a little bit more difficult to question things or to calm down or to be nice or to meditate or to question people or to go against mainstream, you know, that seems to be a, a problem with most humans, actually. It has to do with fear. Only a few people have that freedom. They can dance everywhere they want to. They can fly mentally. They can be anywhere in the coordinate system and they can dress in any way they want to and talk the way they want to. Very few people that will think outside of outside of those given norms in any particular society. When they always say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, this <laughs> does not apply to me, okay? But I might not go to Rome. I mean, you know, just to use this example, I might go to Rome to, to meet Alessandro Michele, I would like to meet him, he's amazing, and Rome is amazing, but I'm not going to travel anymore, but, you know, I wouldn't travel to Afghanistan, that's for sure, or I wouldn't even, I wanted to travel to Malaysia, I've been thinking about moving to Malaysia for many years, because it's tropical, and I like tropical climates, and plants and ocean and I like Asian people but then I I looked at the demographic and I saw that there's like 50% Muslims and people and they even have a Sharia police and if the woman doesn't wear a shador or or I think a hijab then they can arrest her it's like okay Hell no, I'm not going to travel there, okay? So it's not going to happen. I want to be me, and I want to be welcomed as me. The living being that I am, with the same rights and intelligence as men have. We women have the same intelligence and the same rights to dignity and freedom. Uh, going to a, a country that practices oppression of women, that's not for me, okay? I'm not going to go there. So I stay where I am because I like it here. This is good. There's issues here. There's issues everywhere, believe me. Germany is becoming more ridden with issues now because of the invasion. Angela Merkel let them in. Now she calls it dark forces. No, Angela, those are not dark forces. Those are the people you let into your country. Okay. 
Let's call the kid by the name. Let's look at things straightforward, not around some kind of wheel or shadow. Let's look at, let's take the shadow of your eyes and look at the things for what they really are. So, but anyway, I, when someone feels irritated at someone, and it's still it is unconscious you know it's an unconscious or maybe there there's an inner conflict happening you know there are people there are some men that watch my videos i don't know with some other motives and then and then there is an inner conflict happening between that what i say and and that what they want me to rather say and and that what they want to see me as and so yeah it becomes a conflict so there may be some people that or they started out watching me my videos for other reasons because maybe they thought it's kind of it's kind of relaxing, you know, but you can do that yourself. You can make, make videos and talk about your own subjects. So you have that freedom, you know, we don't have to just accept my videos. You can turn that off and or watch someone else's video. There, There's a woman, Caroline ASMR, for example, she doesn't talk. And when she talks, she makes amazing sounds that are tingly. I watch her all the time, very relaxing. And when she talks, she makes sure that the subjects she talks about are completely void of opinion. There's just absolutely, I have never seen someone be so completely void of opinion. There's no, nothing to, and I'm, I'm, pretty sure she has that Stockholm type of DNA as well. So Germans have it, they, they have that, there's a lot of that in it. There's a lot, there's a high percentage Scandinavian and Germans too, you know, this, this we want to make it right for every single person. It's impossible, you can't. You can't. I mean, it, I respect her very, very much. And I think that's great. And that's her choice, you know, to keep the videos completely free from politics, religion, or any kind of opinionated opinion or whatever, or statement or, you know, like about anything. So. It's, it's just pure, total acceptance for all. Well, that's good. That's very, that's very Buddhist. It's very great. It's just that I personally can't, I could not, never make videos like that. That would never work for me. So I'm not judging her at all. You know, I respect her for that. That's great. It's also an ability. It's also a skill. It's not a deficit. So it's also good for survival you know, to, to be completely free from opinion. But I don't know if that shakes the world up enough. You know, see, that's the thing. I think she helps the world in her way. She does. For me, it would never work because there are just too many things and issues in the world that need to be addressed, that need to be talked about. So there's no way I can ever shut up about this. No way. I have to talk about it. I have to bring it up. It has to be addressed. It has to be brought into people's consciousness. There's a whole lot of things in the world that are not in people's consciousness. There may be just a handful of people who see what I see. All these different things, these nuances in 
in people's ways of thinking and feeling and inter interacting with each other. I see all of this. <laughs> Nothing goes unnoticed. It's kind of harsh, you know. It's a harsh way of living like this. But it's also helpful, you know. It's, it helps to bring a very good judgment in terms of you know, good judgment in terms of evaluating the world and knowing where the risks and the dangers are and knowing how to navigate yourself through the world, through life. Very important. It's good to be psychic. Very good. Dogs are psychic. So this is a survival tool. Cats are psychic. Cats, they can, they can sense good vibes from two blocks away or three blocks away. And they'll go directly to that house that has good vibes. And they'll go, can I live here? And we go, oh my gosh, that's very flattering of you, but we have a dog and he is not okay with that. So... I'm so sorry, you have to move on. Or you can move into the garage and we all have a box there for you with old clothes in it and you can sleep in that and that's what they do. That's what the stray kitties do. They sleep in that box in the winter. It doesn't get that cold here anyway, but it's good to have that box for them. So they can bury themselves in, the, in all of the clothes and get warm. It's really cool. And they catch rats and mice. They also catch some birds, which is not good. And they caught some of the of those chipmunks, which are native here, and that's not good. It's, it's all brutal, of course. But I'd rather have the cat do that work, that dirty, <laughs> dirty work, you know than having to deal with, I could never use um, a, any kind of snap or death trap for any little being, you know, I could never do that. I particularly advise people not to get glue traps because that's extremely cruel. Okay, That's a slow death and it's extremely painful and, and cruel. Okay, don't get glue traps. Okay, no to glue, glue traps. Okay. I also recommend to people to never use any kind of rodenticide or any kind of pesticide. Never use any kind of poison, any kind of roach, motel, or any kind of poison. Okay, It's extremely bad for the environment, for the groundwater, and it comes back at us in a loop and it, it's direct karma you know and it is it can then the animal the poison animal can be eaten by another animal which can, can be eaten by another animal also sometimes poison animal can be eaten by pet animal and so stay away from poison very very important very important thing that's extremely important to say you know within the framework of relaxation and and netting and clay and asmr so it's very important i could never and i'm not judging people who just do asmr i'm just saying that if i do asmr it will always contain information because my goodness the world is void of important information. That's why I want therapy centers to be established, where help centers, where we do therapy and educating, where people get the, the vital nu nutrition of education, the whole food nutrition of education. 
yeah not just in in the field of nutrition but in the field of ethics in the field of how to how to live most people don't even know how to live at all they get their information from commercials you know from Monsanto that is they're trying to sell their poisons and people will buy it because they don't question it they see that and they think oh they must know what they're doing or or the FDA approves it Mm -hmm. they don't question it they don't question these things not everything that's approved by the FDA is good you know some things like Roundup they may be approved here because of corruption but they're not approved in Europe so we need to question these things you know it causes neurological damage we don't need any more extra neurological damage in this world very important so what else did I want to talk about so might cut off any time now I don't know how long the the video making capacity is maybe it may be longer than on the tablets so but I don't want to make my videos that much longer I want to make my videos more like between 40 and 60 minutes not longer than that I mean who watches this anyway so but it needs to be said you know the the energetic message to the world needs to be recorded in this long ass video (laughs) so what else oh just just towards the end now i want to talk a little bit about interaction and i see men the way they interact with women and then they they go home and they they're depressed and they go oh women are they women suck they are mean i better go to mactow or whatever <laughs> but they never ask the question why why did it not work out with the girl why Is it my husband? He will say, oh, it's because of my skinny legs that they all left me. Uh, I left them four times. The reason why I came back is because he's the only person in my life who is, has decency. So he's extremely hard to get along with. So that's why I had to leave. But then I came back because he's decent. He has decency. It's kindness. That's the most important thing for me. Skinny legs. That is uh, looks. uh, Even sexual compatibility. None of this matters for me at all. What matters is that the person is kind. Uh, I don't may end up not having a sexual relationship with that person which is the case here but it doesn't matter you know so you know the the men i like sexually that i'm sexually compatible with those are often psychopaths okay and it may work for a, a brief flirt or something but please on arm's length because I'm not interested in being murdered anytime soon. So, but it's those men that uh, they will beat a woman bloody. I just watched a a woman's video last night who uh, talked about her encounter with a violent man. She had a violent boyfriend who beat her up where her whole face was bleeding and then he'll go back to the party afterwards and act like everything is cool that's total disconnect you know and it's those men and naturally you know she goes to the hospital and blocks him on all levels of life and will never see him again of course you know she has to protect herself 
And then he'll go to his friends and he'll complain that she broke up with him. How dare she breaks up with him, you know. And then the friends will say, well, he's the beaten down guy. <laughs> he beat her bloody. But he, he feels like he's the victim. Well, that's also why he beat her, because in his mind, he thinks he's the victim. <sighs> Man, that's disconnected. So there's, I see like in those type of men, I see, I see there's, there's absolutely no way they can see that other living being as, as having rights or having feelings or having needs or being deserving of love and respect. They, they see animals and women as commodities. So, and then they go and complain why the women don't want anything to do with them, why it's hard for them to get a girlfriend or particularly keep a girlfriend. So they, they can't put A and B together on this. Well, let me tell you something, you know, if you are mean in any way to a woman, it's not going to work out. Okay. It's not, it's just not going to be, even if she's masochistic and stays, it's not going to be ha a happy relationship. So for men who want to actually have a girlfriend, the first step that they have to do is they have to recognize that they are they themselves are mentally ill and severely mentally ill. A man who's violent, verbally abusive, or physically abusive to animals and humans is severely mentally ill. It's the first recognition that needs to happen. Those are also the, the ones that never go to a psychiatrist. They act their mental illness out until they get forced into a psychiatric office, until they get put in prison by others. They'll never go voluntarily. But my recommendation is, you know, before it comes to this point, before it comes to the point where you act out anger on another living being, you need to go into meditation. And you need to become aware that the feelings you're having of you feel victimized, you feel wronged, or in whatever way, you know, in the things you interpret into the other person's way of thinking or behavior or something. They interpret all kinds of things. It's, it's a schizophrenic. You know. So, yes, Baba Dog, all right. Yes, you are my everything. So my dog is my number one priority. Okay. That goes that goes light years over sexual pleasure. Light years. I for sexual pleasure I have my toys, you know, I don't need some dude in my life, you know. So I'd rather live in celibacy. Well, I'm not gonna endanger my family, so not going to do it. And I'm sure that there are men out there who are amazing on every level, right? I'm sure that exists too. But they are, they are already married, they're already in a happy relationship, and they're not looking, and so many of them are movie stars, like Vin Diesel. So, I'm not going to cry after that and get all depressed because I don't have that. No, it's it doesn't have that rank. It doesn't have that priority in my life to have that prince charming with the big muscles and all of this and and the compatibility and all of this. No, no, I don't. It's, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is Papa Dog 
and then Paul, my best human friend, you know, it's hard to get along with him. He blames the skinny legs on girlfriends leaving. It wasn't the skinny legs. You know, he's not, you know, he's he's not bad looking. He's not, he thinks he's bad looking. He's not bad looking at all. He has, his dentist likes him. So, no, and she's young. And so, no, he's not bad looking. But he'll blame that because rather rather than looking at what it really is and what he, you know, the unconscious stuff, the, the nagging and all of this. You know. Women won't stay for that either. Okay, and constant nagging and, and constant blaming and, and crybabying and stuff like that. No, who, who wants to hang out with that? It's, it's really super annoying, you know. When we go on a vacation, it's like I always joke and say that, you know, my dad had this joke about the Soviet Union. So I transcribed that to many other situations. And in our case, a vacation in a short van. So first prize, one week of van traveling. Second prize, two weeks of van tra traveling. And third prize, three full <laughs> weeks of van traveling with Paul. Yes. Ah. So, yeah, too bad I only got the third prize because now I have to go for three weeks. <laughs> so, yeah, at least, you know, I, I try to joke about it and make myself feel a little bit better. But in the meantime, lots of lots of arguments, lots of annoying, lots of irritation and not easy, you know. but the, the bottom line, the most important thing is that he cares about Papa Dog more than himself, and he cares about animals and environment. That is the most important thing there is to me. You know, everything else, even if he's nagging, but crybaby, all of this is of that secondary. I take the crybaby baby any time. And the nagging and the blaming, never taking really responsibility for his own mistakes, blaming it on me or on others. It's always someone else's fault, you know, it's a corporation for whatever. Or it's the women that left him, it's there, it's all their fault, you know, it's very irritating. But you know what? I take that, that uh, annoying thing with the good because the good way out outweighs everything else. The, the good is what matters. That's the most important thing. So, to meet someone who doesn't have crybabying and is also an animal rights activist and also, you know, super caring person. Very, very, I mean, like it, the, the, the superhuman, the superhuman, you know. So like according to Friedrich Nietzsche, now, that's, a, that's probably super, super rare. So it's already amazing that I met Paul at all. From all these millions of people that I've met in LA, you know, all these millions of people walking by on the street or talking to them and so on. Some of them are nice, but you know, none of them was an animal rights activist. So I meet Paul and I was like, wow, amazing. He speaks my mind. And that's what matters. It's the friendship. That's, I put friendship above all these other, you know, these dating type of things, this or whatever, fad or whatever, looks, all oh, these other things that people put first. They always put their, their pleasure and their and their prestige before and anything that is that has to do with compassion and love. And that's very sad. And the corporations rub that in. They work with it. They use people that think that way. So they keep that going. Religion keeps that going. You know. Religion keeps coldness and disconnect going. And we need that needs to be ended. 
So, and that's why I want therapy centers where people can get real decent education about things and where they can actually really improve their lives and where they can really talk about everything they want to talk about. All the things, the embarrassing things, you know, the things that are taboo in society, all of it. So I want to see therapy centers happening and it needs to happen as soon as possible. And if anyone can help me with this endeavor, please let me know. Okay, you guys take care.